Next, let's talk about a new problem setting, which is queries over long sliding window. A useful model of stream processing is that queries are about a window of length n. So basically we only care about the n most recent elements received. And one interesting case is that n is so large that the data cannot be stored in memory or even on the disk. Or maybe there are so many streams that the windows for all of them cannot be stored. So for example, in Amazon, for every product S, X, we can keep a zero one stream of whether that product was sold in the end transaction or not. Then we will want to answer queries like how many times have we sold X uh, in the last case sale, right? And for example, let's say, uh, let's say that we have this sliding window and we have this data stream. Then as time goes by, the sliding window will gradually move from the past uh, to the future. And, and the queries would only uh, be related to the content inside this window. So now let's say that the problem is that we are given a string of zeros and ones, and we want to be prepared to answer queries of the form, uh, how many ones are in the last k bits. And note that here k is smaller than or equal to n. So the obvious solution is that we can store the most uh, recent n bits, and whenever a new bit comes in, we can discover or uh, dis discard the n plus one bit. So basically, uh, the sliding window will move as we as we slide, as we saw before. And whenever a new bit comes, we'll just discard the last bit, right? And of course, you can see that we, you cannot get an exact answer without storing the entire window. So in order to get exact exact answer, um, there's no there's no workaround. You have to store uh, all the n bits. But what if we, we cannot afford to store the n bits? For example, if we are processing 1 million streams and each of the stream has uh, 1 million bits, so it's, it's, it's practically impossible to store all this data, right? But one good news is that if we are happy with an approximate answer, then there might be something we can do. Um, for example, uh, let's, again, the, the problem we have is that how many ones in the last n bit, right? And one simple solution that doesn't really solve our problem is to use the uniformity assumption. So basically we will have uh, to maintain two counters. We have the counter X, which counts the number of ones from the beginning of the stream. And we have another counter Z, which counts the number of zeros from the beginning of the stream. Then the, the answer of this question, how many ones are there in the last bit, would just be N times S uh, over S plus S, right? But we have a problem here because what if the, tree, the stream is non-uniform? And what if that this basically this, what it says is that what if the distribution of the data changes over time? In this case, these two counters definitely not accurate to 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 estimate uh, the number of ones in the last n bit. And this is why we need a DGIM solution, which does not assume uniformity. And in this algorithm, we only need to store uh, the square of log n bits per stream. So it's actually using very, very uh, small space. And this solution can give us approximate answer and it's never off by more than 50%. And what's even better is that this error factor can be reduced to any fraction uh, larger than zero with more complicated algorithm and proportionally uh, more stored bits. But before going into detail, of this algorithm, let's take a look at a simpler version of this algorithm. So this is, this is a simpler version that can help 
but it doesn't quite work perfectly. And the idea is to summarize exponentially uh, include increasing regions of the string looking backward. So basically we will have increasingly uh, uh, exponentially increasing size of windows and we're, we're going to count the number of ones in those windows and we'll just store the, this kind of summary information and we're going to drop the small regions if we begin uh, if they begin at the same point as a larger larger region but for example let's say that we have this whole stream of data and we only care about the most recent n bits then basically we can uh, just summarize this data uh, using uh, exponentially increasing size of windows. For example, this 10 simply means that in this region here, we have uh, a total number of 10 ones, right? And in order to, in order to count the total number of ones, in the most recent entries, all, all we want to do is just to add up all these number in the corresponding windows, right? For example, uh, we can just, uh, to calculate the number of ones in the, in the last n bit, we can compute it as zero plus one plus two uh, plus 10. And the last window here is tricky because we only, uh, we only have like part of the part of the window that's involved in this last n bit. We know that this window of width 16 has six ones, but we actually we don't know exactly how this six ones distributed uh, in this window. Right? So basically, we can reconstruct the count of the last n bit, except that we are not quite sure how many of the last six ones are included. In, in the end bits. So what's good about this simpler algorithm is that it already uh, only stores uh, uh, the square of log n bits. So why is that? This is because uh, we were using increasing in, in, uh, exponentially increasing size of windows. So basically we only need log n windows, right? And in each of the window, the number is definitely no no larger than n. And to, in order to store an integer that's no larger than n, you typically only need to, uh, you only need log, log n bits. So basically uh, you, have, you have log n windows and each window will only need the log n bits. And, and in total, you're gonna need uh, the square of log n bits, this kind of space. And another thing that's good is that it's, uh, it's easy to update as more bits come. And the error in count is no greater than the number of ones in the unknown area here. For example, here, the, the last window has six, six ones. Then you can see that if we count, however you count uh, these string, the error can, can never be larger than six. But what's not so good about this method is as long as the ones are fairly, remember as long as the ones are fairly evenly distributed, uh, it's, it's good enough because the error due to unknown region is small. It's no, no more than 50%. The problem is that it could be that all the ones here in the window are actually in the unknown area at the end. And in this case, we can see that the error is unbounded, right? And in the next part, we're gonna talk about how to fix this problem uh, with a small modification of this simple algorithm.